Okay, so first of all, guys, uh, I apologise for uh, maybe a bit of a croaky, sort of muffled kind of voice. I'm full of cold at the moment. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, last week, uh, Toy Story 4 was announced. And uh, yeah, this is just sort of going further down the path of uh, what I kind of feared uh, Pixar are kind of just sort of doing now. They're just making sequels. You know, it's, it's kind of a, a very sort of obvious indication that they are kind of running out of new ideas. And they're, they're just trying to sort of reuse... Um, the ones they already have. But uh, having said that, you know, of the um, three sequels that uh, they've made in, you know, the more recent years, Monsters University, which, well, that's actually a prequel, but, you know, same kind of idea anyway. Cars 2 and uh, Toy Story 3, I've liked two of them. You know, I, I don't really like the idea of just making sequels, which is what Pixar seem to be doing now. Um, but having said that, they do seem to sort of so far be producing decent films. And even in the case of, like, Cars 2... I can at least see why they decided to make that a sequel to Cars. I didn't particularly like the first Cars film, but I could kind of see the logic behind, you know, if you're going to make a, a spy film, you know, but also sort of aimed at kids and it, it being a bit more sort of fun and less sort of complicated, I can see how, you know, if you've already got a film about Cars, you, you know, in your archive, if you like, I can see how making it a sequel to that uh, would kind of make sense, you know. It was kind of weird, actually, you know, even though I didn't think it was a particularly good film, you know, I didn't understand this frequent criticism that a lot of people seem to have with it, which was that it didn't feel like a sequel to Cars. You know, it, it had talking cars in it, you know, with a mind of their own and everything. What more did you want, really, as a sequel to Cars? Which kind of takes me sort of on to this uh, other sort of... The other criticism of, uh, I think, Cars 2 was, you know, that Lightning McQueen wasn't in it very much. Uh, and I thought that had the potential to actually work okay, because, you know, I didn't really find that character particularly interesting, and I felt, you know, his journey was completed. Uh, the problem was, of course, the character of Mater just, you know, wasn't a particularly in interesting character either. As a basic idea of focusing on a new character, I do think that's kind of interesting. You know, that's what has me kind of excited about Finding Dory. It kind of makes me think that maybe this new film could potentially be... Uh, a good thing because I said in my review of Toy Story 3 that uh, you know it would be kind of interesting to see more of development of Bonnie's toys you know that didn't get a huge amount of screen time in the, in the uh, previous film do I think that's a you know a sufficient enough reason to make another film uh, after the previous one you know wrapped things up so well uh, no I don't and you know on top of that I don't think you know film series of four films works particularly well because then you sort of have two films in the middle which is kind of sort of too much, you know, you, three films, you know, just one film in the middle, that that kind of fits much better as a sort of beginning, a middle and end. Four films just doesn't work anything like as well to me. Obviously with the third film seeming like an ending to the series, you know, it's going to seem even more weird because, you know, you have the third film wrapping things up and then presumably the ending to the fourth film is going to try and wrap things up as well. So it's just going to seem a bit kind of strange to me. I don't know, you know, you never quite know after, you know, that you make a third film whether or not there's going to be a fourth, and then conversely, you don't know if there's going to be a fifth or a sixth or whatever. But uh, the basic idea, I think, behind making a sequel to Toy Story has always been, or, you know, even just the idea of Toy Story in the first place, was to create problems or conflicts or ideas that you could only do with toys. You know, it, it wasn't anything that you could possibly do in any other kind of environment. It would have to be toys coming to life. So, you know, the first one was, what happens when toys are lost and... The second and kind of the third one as well are both about, you know, what happens when the owners of toys grow up, what happens to the toys. They've kind of, you know, run those two basic ideas, you know, as far as they can possibly go. So it does sort of lead me into thinking now, well, what else could you do with toys that you couldn't do with anything else? What other sort of toy exclusive problems are there that they could potentially explore? I thought long and hard about this, about what else you could do with toys. And the only other thing I can think of is maybe what happens to toys if they never get sold. See, I thought it was kind of interesting in the first film that uh, Buzz, first of all, doesn't know he's a toy, but not only that, he actually thinks he's the character that he is a toy of. Uh, but then in the th second film, Woody presumably always knew he was a toy. He didn't, he wasn't like Buzz. He didn't just sort of find out later, you know, shortly after, you know, his box opened or whatever, that he, he was a toy. He I think he probably knew from the moment, you know, he first sort of gained consciousness or whatever happens when a toy is born, uh, he knew he was a toy. Um, because he didn't even know that he was the toy of a very specific cowboy character. I guess he just sort of thought he was uh, a generic cowboy doll. So it's kind of interesting that Buzz not only knows 
what he's a toy of, but he actually thinks he is that character, basically. Whereas Woody didn't know he was any particular character at all. So I'd be kind of interested to see, you know, why is that? You know, why would certain toys think that they are the character that they are a toy of? And why would they be conscious of it, but other toys not be? You know, I'd be kind of interested to see, you know, some kind of explanation as to why that was. You know, do, do all toys... Uh, wake up out of their box thinking that they are actually the the character that they are a toy of you know, if they're not a toy of any particular character you know what do they think they are you know do you know generic superhero dolls or cowboy dolls or whatever do, do they just sort of think they're generic cowboys or whatever at what point does a toy gain consciousness as well you know does it is it uh, you know in suspended animation the whole time it's inside its box and it just something triggers in its mind to make it wake up so yeah these are kind of ideas that i think uh, they could potentially make a story out of but at the same time, the problem with this as an idea is it kind of requires you to introduce a whole new cast of new toy characters. And I think the problem is that we, we kind of don't want to see that. We kind of want to see a story about, you know, the, the characters we already have. We've already got a decent sort of cast here of, you know, obviously Andy's toys and obviously now a huge new cast of uh, Bonnie's toys. I guess the other potential idea is you just sort of send those toys off on some kind of adventure, but it sort of begs the question, well, why does that have to be a sequel to Toy Story? Why couldn't it have just simply have been a standalone film on its own about, you know, a completely new cast of characters? Because, of course, that is the other problem with making a sequel to anything, which is that you create a cast of characters, presumably to tell the story of the first film. If you want to make a sequel, you have to create a new story and force those characters that may not have necessarily fit to that story particularly well into that. Um, The characters of Woody and Buzz were sort of uh, set up and designed in a specific way for it to be, you know, a very old toy that, uh, you know, was very sort of primitive and didn't do very much in the case of Woody. And then a really advanced, modern, really sort of, you know, for want of a better word, cool toy that uh, everybody sort of wants and everybody looks up to. And it just sort of makes the older toy look bad by comparison. You know, the characters of Woody and Buzz were created for the purpose of the story that uh, they wanted to tell in the first Toy Story. They then had to sort of create a story around the character of Woody for the second film and then I guess the third one as well. But they've done that quite well in the past, so who's to say that they can't do it again? The o- the other sort of potential idea is I think that they, they probably are going to find, you know, a new focus or a new character to, to tell a story around. You know, most likely I would think probably either Jesse or one of Bonnie's toys to sort of tell a story about, maybe, and explore them a little bit more. This is probably a, a film that's going to focus less on Woody and Buzz, and I, I think I'd, I'd like to see that. Personally, I'd like to see more development and more focus on uh, the other toys that, uh, you know, have very much sort of stood on the sidelines. In fact, that's what one thing I didn't sort of enjoy quite so much about uh, the first film is that, you know, it is just almost exclusively Woody and Buzz the whole time. It's very little development and very little focus on any of the other toys in Andy's room. So it would be just nice to see a bit of development of those other toys. So I can see the potential for some interesting ideas here if they take things in the right direction here. But uh, the big problem for me and the big reason why I still don't think this is a particularly good idea is this just is going to ruin the ending to the third film, which I thought was a fantastic way to wrap up the series. And also a trilogy is just right for me. It's just, you know, a beginning, a middle and an end. And four films just doesn't work anything like as well. So overall, I don't think that this is a particularly good idea, but now that we know that it's happening, I'm at least somewhat optimistic that they can at least find a few sort of interesting ideas with this, with at least, you know, maybe finding out a little bit more about how a toy's life works exactly. Uh, And also, perhaps it's a chance maybe to focus on some characters that haven't been developed nearly as much. So anyway, that's uh, what I think of the idea of uh, Toy Story 4. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I will see you later.